Please let me return to uh, sanctions. New sanctions against Russia stuck in a limbo over the Greek-Hungarian protest. Hungary and Greece are not happy with a list of private companies Ukraine calls war sponsors, which includes a number of European ones. As Politico puts it, the EU is currently discussing its 11th sanction package against Russia after the start of Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine more than a year ago. But Budapest and Athens have thrown a collective spanner in the works by linking their approval for the package to a separate thorny issue involving Ukraine. Kiev has compiled a list of private sponsors and companies of war sponsors, which includes a number of European companies. When we talk about great companies, we need to understand that in Greece, there are quite a large number of companies that are owners of tankers and ships as legal entities. These are companies in question. They provide transport services to the Russian Federation for the transportation of oil, in particular for the grey exports of this energy carrier to the third countries. Therefore, due to the fact that they help circumvent sanctions, they were included in the list of war sponsors. Simple as that. So obviously what is happening, Hungary and Greece are using the sanctions package as a political leverage. Is there a possibility that they will be able to reach any liable and workable agreement with Europe? And if that is the case, when that can happen, you think? I'm sorry, Henry, I don't know the un I don't have the answer to that. I mean, this is this is back to the complexity of, you know, getting 27 or 30, no, 27 in the case of the European Union countries to um, agree on you know, that the nature of the European Union is all 27 countries need to agree. So any one country can block a major movement. So it's, you know, I'm not sufficiently an expert on the um, on, on the okay. on the Thank mechanics you. and the levers of power sure. within the European Union to know what can be done by the overwhelming majority to convince um, or whether there are any, or whether there are any sanctions that can be brought to bear on Budapest and Athens that would make them relent on these activities, it is a challenge. I'm afraid I, I know what should be done, but I don't know how it can be done. I will you know, take the this European as an answer. Union, Thank you very much, Cormac. Yeah. I will take this as an answer. Thank you. Deputy Prime Minister of Hungary, Old Semyon has confirmed the transfer of 11 Ukrainian prisoners of war of Hungarian origin from Russia to Hungary. According to the Hungarian outlet ATV, the Russian Orthodox Church issued a statement on June 8th, I quote, as part of an inter-church cooperation at the request of the Hungarian side, a group of Ukrainian prisoners of war of Transcarpathian origin who took part in combat actions was transferred to Hungary. The release of Ukrainian prisoners of war is always good news, of course, wrote MFA Ukraine spokesperson Oleg Nikolenko. At the same time, the Ukrainian government was not informed about the relevant negotiations between the Hungarian and Russian parties. The Ukrainian side submitted a request to provide detailed information about our citizens and to immediately ensure access to them in order to get acquainted with the state of health and provide them with counsel assistance. Ignoring the Ukrainian side, is nothing but Moscow's attempt to twist the whole picture and to turn the fate of Ukrainian Transcarpathians into Hungarian in a matter and not that of Ukraine. Moscow is trying to strengthen its propaganda narrative, I believe, about the split of Ukraine and so-called territorial claims of Ukraine's neighbors on its territory. It's both sad and obvious that Hungary, again, played along with Putin's propaganda and became a co-participant of the Russian disinformation tool IPSO, Info Psychological Operation. It looks just like a human trafficking to me, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it not, do you think Orban and Putin will ever be held accountable for that or it will just, you know, playing their roles and doing what they want? But do you think um, that Viktor Orban really believes it? Like what he's doing, he's opposing Ukraine in any possible way. No, I, I think, I, look, I think Viktor Orban is a case aside. Viktor Orban is, is, a, is an ally of the Kremlin and certainly was going back to when I was working in Kiev and when I was working with, uh, with the Minister of Education and Science when, they, when the Hungarians were giving um, Ukraine huge problems because of, um, because of a Ukrainian language act back in 2017, 2018. Um, and of course, of course, Hungary has a seat on NATO and a seat on the EU. So it can, it has, and it continues 
to do everything it can to frustrate Ukraine's progress and to frustrate support for Ukraine. So I think, um, I, look, I mean, if I was to make a judgment, I would say Viktor Orban knows exactly what he is doing. And Viktor Orban, by all the evidence that we have, is an ally of the Kremlin. Obviously, Viktor Orban is, has been bought, but would he be held accountable just as well as Putin for all they're doing? Well, you know, again, not an area of great expertise, but I go back to 2018 and work that I did with um, the then Minister for Education and Science when there was, um, when Ukraine was having um, initially huge problems. And again, in the region of Transcarpathia and the, you know, the ethnic Hungarian um, minority there. And there was claims that they were going to lose their language rights and that they were going to have the Ukrainian language imposed on them. And it was very, very clear at the time that our ban was was very much on Putin's side and on the Kremlin side and was using this to was using this to gain advantage, but was also using Hungary's position mm. and veto within the European Union and within NATO um, to um, to block and to frustrate um, Ukrainian progress. So um, without being really all over the detail, I think on this, what we see is a continuation um, of something which has been going on for at least in my time since late 2017, 2018, um, with this particular problem with Orban and Hungary. But I think the more important thing to notice is um, it would seem by all the evidence that Orban is clearly an ally of Putin and is not a friend of Ukraine and is not a good partner of the European Union or NATO, not a partner that the European Union or NATO can rely on. And this is a this is a this is a serious problem and this is a this is a question for the leadership of the European Union and the leadership of NATO. How do they solve a problem called Orban? You know, Greece is a problem but to a lesser extent. Absolutely. But I would focus on Hungary and Orban, who has I correct me if I'm wrong, I believe recently been successful. Have, have there been elections in Hungary recently? Elections in Hungary, I can't remember the exact day, but I believe so. I don't think so. This is the case. Yeah. Sorry, I may be getting confused, but I mean, that, 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 that to me is the overwhelming problem that, um, you know, we have an enemy inside the camp. We have a partner in the EU and NATO that EU and NATO and not depend upon Absolutely. and that certainly Obviously. Ukraine cannot depend on but that Putin can depend on now that to me seems blatantly clear and if nothing else you know the you know the um, 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 the good voters across 450 million people across the European Union need to be very very clear in understanding this and maybe that's something that you know um, uh, um, your channel can can help can help do because their leaders must know that their people do not support this but it's a huge problem and how that problem is solved is 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 a um, is a question for as, as i said for the leaders of the eu and for the leaders of nato but it's a massive problem at a time of war and a war that i keep saying though that the point is this war is not just being waged on ukraine this is a war against all of us and it's a war that began that began being waged against all of us at least as early as 2005. I go back to 2005 when two things happened. You know, one, Russia Today was set up, but also um, Viktor Yushchenko. They, they, the Russians tried to assassinate Viktor Yushchenko, the president of the Orange Revolution, who had very clearly put his hand up that he was he intended to take Europe on the westward direction that the Ukrainian people wanted. So they tried to kill him. They put dioxin in the borscht. I know quite a little bit about this because I've met the Yushchenkos and, I've, and I know a number of friends of theirs. And Victor's wife said to me um, at the start of this war, she said, you know, Cormac, the first shot in this war was fired when they tried to murder my husband. And we did nothing about it. We didn't even pay attention to it. 
there was a there was a prospective he was a prospective president at the time he wasn't even president he was campaigning to the orange revolution to be president and he was it was very clear that Viktor Yushchenko would 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 do everything in his power to take Ukraine westward.